Hi, this is Maggie from Crafts the Charm. Thank you for stopping by my channel. I'm so glad you're here. In another video, I made a drawstring backpack using a pattern from Apple Green Cottage. And in that video, I was making a backpack with my old racing numbers on it. And I made some suggestions at the end of the video for making a backpack with a racing number from a Disney road race. I've never run in a Disney road race, but I thought, hey, we could make a backpack, which is for Disney pin trading. So that's what I'm going to make today. Now I've already cut out the fabric for the backpack, and this time I'm going to make the small backpack, thinking that this might be better in a smaller size, maybe for a child. So what I've got here is one 13 inch by 10 inch piece of clear vinyl. This is 12 gauge vinyl, which I bought at Joann's Fabrics. The vinyl, you can see from the way I have this laid out, is for the bottom of the backpack. For the top of the backpack, I've got one 13 inch by eight and a half inch piece of fabric. And I'm using this gorgeous green plaid fabric, which I got on Amazon. I'll include a link in the description. For the back outer piece, I have one 13 inch by 16 inch piece of black fabric. This is the Mybecca canvas marine fabric which I also bought at Amazon, and I'll include a link in the description. For the lining, I'm going to be using this black solid stretch twill, which I got at Joann Fabrics. And for the lining, I have two 13 inch by 15 and three quarter inch pieces. That's for the inner lining. And then for the lining for the front pocket, I originally cut this the length from the pattern, which was 13 inches by 16 and a half inches, but I modified the pattern for this backpack. So you only need a 13 inch by 11 inch piece. That's one inch larger than your outer front piece, the clear vinyl. In addition, you're going to need two pieces for the anchor tabs on the sides. Those are three inches by four inches and two pieces for the casing at the top. Those are 12 inches by four inches, and I cut both of those out of that my Becca black canvas fabric. You're also going to want some cording. I'm using five millimeter cord, which I bought at Amazon, and you want two 55 inch long pieces of that. We're also going to be using a zipper, and I got a whole bunch of black zippers at Amazon, and I'll include a link to those. Now, because we're making this a sort of Disney themed backpack, you're also going to want some corrugated cardboard that is relatively thin. And you're going to want more of the black canvas fabric to cover the ears. And I also made a little pin board that was also made out of corrugated cardboard and I covered that with two pieces of felt. I'm also using heavy duty black thread for this project. Now we're going to want to prepare all of the pieces so that we can assemble this. So beginning with those two three inch by four inch pieces of fabric for the anchor tabs, you're going to fold those in half wrong sides together and then unfold and fold each of the ends into the middle and then fold it in half again. Between steps, it is always a good idea to press everything. Once you have those folded up and pressed, you're going to sew a top stitch along the long edge, both sides of each of those. The next thing I'm going to do is prepare the casing. And I'll say I was challenged to tell the right side from the wrong side of this black fabric, but there is a right side and a wrong side. So we're going to want to take the short ends and press each of the short ends in a quarter inch and then fold them over another quarter of an inch, press them down, and then sew a stitch along that edge, each edge. I have 12 inch zippers here. The instructions say for the small backpack to cut that to nine inches 
and then add tabs to make it 13 inches long total. Now, I think if I were doing this again, I would not cut it to nine inches. I would make it longer so that I could open up almost that entire pocket because this gives us a small opening over the pocket, but I would prefer a larger opening for putting my pin board in. So I wouldn't do this exactly the same way if I were doing this again. The method I'm following for the zipper tabs is from Notches Sewing, and I'll include a link in the description. So as I am following the instructions, I am going to cut this zipper to nine inches. So I cut off the end with the zipper stop, and then I opened up the zipper and cut off the top of the zipper so that it was nine inches long. Now my zipper tape is one inch wide. So for my zipper tabs, I'm going to have a two and a half inch dimension. That's double the zipper tape plus a half inch for seam allowance. And then I decided to cut them three inches in the other dimension because I thought a little bit too long was better than a little bit too short. So the next thing I'm going to do is fold down a quarter inch on the two and a half inch side and I'm folding that the right side in towards the wrong side and then folding the fabric in half right sides together and sewing a quarter inch seam. We're then going to press that seam open and fold our zipper tab open and we're going to insert it onto an end of the zipper with the folded over part down, aligning that seam on the back side of the zipper with the zipper teeth and then sewing a half inch seam across the top. Then we're going to pull it back over the zipper so that it's on the outside of the zipper, right side out, and then we'll press it and we'll sew a top stitch along the end of it. And obviously do that with both sides of the zipper. Now we're going to assemble the front bottom of the backpack. Take your zipper and put it zipper down with the zipper facing to the right on top of your pocket lining fabric. Sew those together. I found this was much easier with a zipper foot. Now I think I neglected to mention the binding tape that I'm going to use here. This is what I happen to have on hand. It's a really thin binding tape in black. I would have preferred a wider one. But what I did was I slipped it over the top of that piece of vinyl so that there was a little bit on one side and a little bit on the front. And I ended up taping that down with scotch tape to hold it in place so I could sew it on. And the disadvantage to that is that apparently scotch tape really sticks to vinyl. So if you do that, be careful that none of the scotch tape can show through the vinyl. I had to pick a few pieces of tape off that went below the binding tape. And then I pinned that to the other side of the zipper. So I opened up the zipper and the pocket lining, and then I pinned the vinyl with the binding tape over it to the other side of the zipper and I actually ran two seams along that one along the zipper tape along the teeth and the other one below to make sure the binding tape was attached on both sides the top to the zipper through the vinyl and the bottom just to the vinyl just to make it neat. Now once you've done that you're going to fold that pocket lining down so it's behind the clear vinyl. And I pressed that at the top. I did not sew a top stitch because we're about to sew the top on and that will take care of sewing that down. 
So take your top front fabric and place it upside down along the top of your zipper and pocket lining and you're going to sew a quarter inch seam allowance along there. And when you're sewing close to a zipper, even with a zipper foot, you wanna pay attention to where that zipper is. And once you get close to it, you're probably going to want to have needle down and press a foot up, turn your fabric, move that zipper out of the way, and then put everything back together and continue along. Okay, so now I have my front, which is assembled on the right and my back piece, and we can see that the front is taller than the back. That's because we're going to take some of that top piece of fabric and pinch it and pull it down over the zipper pull just to hide it. When I did that, my covering over the zipper was about an inch, I would say, and I sewed a top stitch over that approximately an inch and a quarter from the bottom of that fold. I marked that line with a pencil to make sure I would get a nice straight line. Now take your anchor tabs and I put mine two inches up from the bottom and facing in and you're going to baste those down along with basting the vinyl and the pocket lining together just on the sides. Now we're going to put those top casings and the lining on. So for both the front and the back, you're going to fold those casings now so the wrong sides are together and center them on the top of each piece and clip them on and then lay your lining down on top of that whole thing and clip that on. Do that for both the front and the back and then sew a half inch seam along the top of each piece. Now I'm going to make some ears and rather than use a compass, I was looking for some household item that was the size that I wanted because I wanted you to be able to have a household item. Well, what I landed on was this is um, one of those Dollar Tree plungers. This is one that I used for some other project, I guess, and then took it apart. So I'm just going to trace around that on this corrugated cardboard. And this is relatively thin corrugated cardboard. So I'm going to make two circles and cut them out. And you can see that has a little bit less than a six inch diameter. I decided that the best way to attach this to the backpack would be to attach them to the back of the finished backpack. I didn't like the look of two ears sticking out the sides, so that's why I'm not attaching them now the way I did with the little tabs at the bottom. So what I'm doing is positioning them where I want them to be and then I am drawing a line where the backpack is. And what I'm going to do is cut that out of the cardboard. So you can see here, I have one complete circle, and one where I've cut the cardboard out, and I've drawn that, I've traced it on the complete circle. What I'm going to do now is measure a half inch around that circle and cut it out of my black fabric. And I'll be cutting four of those. Now I'm going to sew those a quarter inch in from the edge. So I'm just running my presser foot or part of my presser foot along that inner line and I'm leaving an opening for turning. But that opening doesn't have to be very big because of the shape of the piece of cardboard that we're going to put inside. It's not a full circle. So once that is sewn, trim the edges but not where the opening is and then position your piece inside so that the spot that we've cut out is where the opening is. And we're going to cut the piece of cardboard out of the other ear as well. And then you could sew this on the machine because you'll see later we're going to stitch over this with the machine. But what I did was I sewed a slip stitch by hand. Now we're ready to sew our backpack together.
So what you're going to do is put the front and the back right sides together and open it up so you're going to put the linings together as well. And the most important thing here is to line up that seam at the top. Then we're just going to do a half inch seam all the way around, starting at the lining, all the way around the lining in the backpack, and we're going to leave an opening at the bottom of the lining for turning. And here I would just say be really slow and careful, especially when we're going over the thicker parts. And when you get to that middle, just check again that your seams are lined up before you stitch over them. Once it's all stitched, clip the corners and then you can trim it close to the seams except for where the opening is and turn it. Make sure you press out those corners really well. Now with the vinyl, it's going to get a little crumpled with the turning. What you can do is warm it a little bit with a blow dryer. Be careful not to warm it too much and it should flatten right out. Now with the ears, this is actually the most challenging part of this. So you'll be able to feel in the ears where that cardboard isn't and the longer side for mine is the side that's going to go down the side of the backpack. So what I did was I just positioned them on the back of the backpack and pinned them in place and then turned it over, made sure they were symmetrical and made sure they looked right. And once I was happy with how they looked, I stitched them on. So the challenge here is just you've got an awkward backpack that's already been sewn together and you've got some stiff pieces of cardboard that you're sewing here. Uh, what I did was I tried to get the presser foot as close as I could to the edge of the cardboard while still being on the inside where there is no cardboard and just made sure that I was only sewing through one layer. Also made sure that my lining was flat, that there weren't any wrinkles in the lining because I'm sewing through both the outer piece of the backpack and the lining. And I just sewed exactly where there isn't cardboard. Now I want to make a pin board to go in that clear plastic pocket so we can show off the pins that maybe we want to trade, maybe we don't. So I'm just cutting this piece of corrugated cardboard and again that opening is a little bit smaller than I would like. So I started with a piece of cardboard that was a little bit larger than I thought maybe would go through that zippered pocket and I just cut it down until I had a piece that I thought was a reasonable size. For my small zipper opening, I ended up with a six by eight piece of cardboard. And then I thought green would be a fun color to cover this with. So I just got whatever green felt I had and I chose a color of green. It's not a perfect match for the green in the tartan at the top of the backpack, but I think it looks okay. I personally would have liked the darker green more, but I'm trying to go a little bit out of my comfort zone here. And I don't know where I got this felt, but the name of the color is apple green. So what I did was I just measured around the cardboard. I gave it about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit more, and I cut two pieces of felt, and then I sandwiched the cardboard in between them and pinned it. And then I used my zipper foot and just sewed as close to that cardboard as I could. It was very easy. And then I started to cut this with my scissors but it looked a lot better if I cut it with my rotary cutter. So I finished cutting it with my rotary cutter. Now I've got my two 55 inch pieces of cord and just putting a safety pin through the end of that. You're going to take the cord and put it through that front casing at the top from the right to the left and then the back casing from the left to the right. And that's the piece of cord that's going to go through the tab on the right. And then you're going to go the opposite way with the other piece of cord. So through the front, left to right, through the back, right to left, and that will go in that left tab. And then what I did was basically the same thing I did with the last backpack. I tied a square knot in the end. So that's right over left and then left over right. 
and then I just whipped down um, those ends a little bit and then trimmed everything off. I won't go through the whipping method again here. I've got a two minute technique on how to whip and I've got that other backpack video where I whipped the ends down. I don't think it's completely necessary anyway to do that. I think it looks fine with the knot. I just wanted a little extra security. And I don't have a lot of Disney pins, but I did take some pins and I just poked them into that pin board. Um, the cardboard was a, a pretty good depth that only maybe a little tiny end of the pin was coming through, not enough to put the backings back on. So I just put some pins on that and slid it into that front pocket. And honestly, I think this would be a really fun pin trading backpack to carry around Disney. And you've got plenty of room inside for your water bottle and any other necessities, maybe plus your pin backings as you go around the park. I'd love to know what you think of this in the comments. I want to say if I can sew it, you can too. Just go slowly and carefully. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you enjoy this sort of content, please subscribe to Crafts the Charm. Thank you for spending time with me today. Take care.